Good morning. Um, I will be reading from Philippians chapter 3, verses 15 through 19 in the New American Standard Bible edition. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have us in us. For many walk of whom I oft told you, and now they tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of, the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is, their, is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Well, good morning, and happy Father's Day to all of our dads this morning joining us in the auditorium and also joining us online. If you have not sent your email to office at mesquitecfc.org uh, to let us know that you're participating with us, please do that uh, as soon as possible. It is good to be here. It's a beautiful Lord's Day outside. Uh, it, is, it is summer. Summer has arrived. Uh, the, the, the water spigot of the heavens uh, for this area, I believe, have been turned off till probably October. Uh, so uh, get ready to start setting your sprinklers uh, or else your art is going to die. Uh, but anyway, it's good to be here this morning. It's good to see all of you. We have some visitors joining us this morning. Welcome. We're glad that you're here and hope that you feel completely and totally at home. Uh, if it's been a while since you've been here, we hope that you feel like you've come back home. It's, it's good to have you with us this morning. We've been studying Paul's letter to the Philippians and the overall message, I believe, in his letter to the Philippians is living life with joyful victory. And we've been taking a look at this, this letter piece by piece, week by week, and the way things have, have fallen is that today we're going to look at this passage, and in this passage, I believe, Paul talks to us about role models. And let me tell you something, our role models make a difference in our life. We can have positive role models, and we certainly have negative role models, and they affect us in different ways. And this morning, I want to take a look at what Paul has to say toward that. But before we get into that message today, which I think for me personally applies to me as a father, and I hope that it is a blessing and an encouragement to all of our fathers, but to all of us as brothers and sisters today. Let's go to God in prayer together. Our Lord and our God, we, we thank you so much for the blessings of life. We thank you for waking us up this morning to a beautiful day that you have created. Lord, we thank you for our families who love us and encourage us, who give us strength and support. We thank you especially today for our fathers. And we know today that many are observing Father's Day for the first time without their father in their life. Lord, we ask that you would bring comfort to them, that you would bring comfort and peace to them, the peace that passes all understanding that only the Spirit can bring. We're thankful, Father, for our new dads. There's some, some young men out there that are celebrating their first Father's Day, and we just ask, Lord, that you will give them strength, that you will give them courage, and that you will give them the compassion and the wisdom that they need to be the fathers that you've called them to be. I pray that they will lean upon the role models in their lives, the positive father role models in their lives to, to go to for advice and for counsel, and that they will emulate in their life. Of course, Lord, we know the best role model that we could ever have is found in Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate role model. He shows us in his life and his ministry all the good that he calls us to be. 
Lord, I just ask that you will open hearts to the message today. I pray that this message will be your message and that this message will be powerful in an undeniably way to your glory. Lord, we pray for our leadership at every level, but we especially pray for the leadership within this city. We pray for our mayor and city council. We ask, Lord, that you will give them wisdom and strength as they lead and make decisions that aren't always popular with regard to the betterment and the best interests of the city of Mesquite. Father, we pray for our shepherds here at the Mesquite Church of Christ. We pray that you will give them wisdom, that you will give them the vision that they need to lead this congregation in the way that you would have it to go. We pray for our deacons and our ministers and our ministry leaders. We just ask, Lord, that you will help us to, to find new ways to reach people for the gospel of Jesus. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name. You know, Mark Twain once said that there are few things that are harder to put up with than the annoyance of a good example. And let me tell you this morning, let me tell you, I am here this morning to tell you that a positive role model makes a difference. And a negative role model also makes a difference in our life. As Christians, let me remind you of something very important. Family, it's not what we say, but what we do that makes the difference to the lost around us. As one unchurched man said, I would not give much for your religion unless it can be seen. Lamps do not talk, but they do shine. Family, it's human nature to emulate the people that we admire. It's just human nature to do that. And some people model their lives after sports figures. I can tell you right now, growing up in Longview, Texas in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, Roger Staubach was my hero. I, that's who I was in the backyard with a Nerf football. I'd tell you right now, I was Roger Dodger back there. Some people emulate their lives after sports figures. Some people model their lives after media figures. Some people model their lives, believe it or not, after political figures. And even, in some cases, you will even find people modeling their lives after criminal figures. And over time, people will adopt certain mannerisms. They will uh, adopt certain catchphrases and, and, and attitudes of their role models. And family, a positive role model can greatly encourage us in our lives. And I've benefited from wonderful role models. I've been blessed with great role models in my life. My father and my mother and my grandfather have had a huge impact on my life and my faith. But also from a professional standpoint, Jimmy Allen, Bruce McClarty, Gene Clower, Dan Lightfoot are preachers who have positively influenced me in the role that I serve in now. But I can tell you also that I've had negative role models that have influenced my life. And you have too. You've had teachers and coaches and people in, even in the church in positions of authority who have abused that authority and they have not set the example that they should for you. And it's very, very disappointing, isn't it? When that happens. I remember when I was a youth minister, I took a job in North Dallas uh, at a rather large congregation and the minister there was a pretty well-known speaker at the time. And I can remember going in a couple of days after I started the job and knocking on his door and walking in and saying, man, I just want to tell you, I'm, I'm excited to be here because I'm looking forward to, to getting to know you better and, and learning from you and having a kind of a mentor relationship and, and, and just learning some great things from you about how to be a really good public speaker. And he said, whoa, whoa, hold up. Wait a minute, Devin. I, I don't have time for that. And I'm going to tell you, I was disappointed. Sometime later, after a staff meeting, 
The same guy said, we're bringing in somebody from outside the congregation to fill the pulpit this week. He traveled a lot. He was a pretty popular speaker at the time. And after the meeting, I just, you know, knocked on his door and said, hey, I'm just curious, why are we bringing somebody from outside the congregation in to fill the pulpit when you're not here? Because I'm on staff, and Phil, our small groups minister, is on staff. We have people on staff to cover that. And he said, well, number one, nobody wants to hear Phil. And Phil had been a pulpit minister for many years in really large congregations. In fact, he was a pulpit minister at the church that Cammie grew up in, in in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He said, nobody really wants to listen to Phil. And Devin, let's be honest. You don't have the credibility, and you haven't earned the privilege. Now, I thought about that for a second. How do you obtain credibility without opportunity? And number two, to this day, I've never understood how anybody could ever earn the privilege of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let me tell you something. We have positive role models in our life, and let me tell you something. We'll find negative role models in the places you never thought that you could find them. And brothers and sisters, we need to understand that role models can lead us forward, but they can also drag us down if we choose the wrong role model. Paul understood this. He understood this very clearly. And as he wrote to the Philippians family, he understood that the people that they chose to follow would impact the growth that they experienced. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, Paul quotes a Greek poet when he said, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. And you know what? We see this in the human world, but we also see it in the natural world, and we see humans influencing the natural world in a negative way. There's a story about the California coast town of Monterey, and this was a pelican's paradise. And for many years, the fishermen, when they cleaned their fish, they would take the entrails and they would feed them to the pelicans. Well, the pelicans made out pretty well. And so the birds, over the course of time, they grew fat, they grew lazy, uh, and they became very contented. Well, eventually somebody figured out how to make a, uh, make a buck off of those fish guts, and they started turning them into fertilizer. Well, there was nothing left for the pelicans after that. But the pelicans made no effort to fish for themselves. And over time, a bunch of those pelicans starved to death. Well, somebody decided that they would solve the problem. Because a man... These pelicans have forgotten how to fish for themselves, and the problem was solved by importing new pelicans from outside the area from the south, and these were birds that were accustomed to fishing and foraging for themselves. And so when they came in, they immediately started catching fish, and the starving pelicans learned from their pelican cousins how to fish for themselves. And the famine was ended. Family? If we have bad role models, we're eventually going to move in the wrong direction in our Christian walk. So what should we be looking for? What are the characteristics of good role models? And from this passage, what are the characteristics of bad role models? Well, let's start with a negative. In our text this morning, in verses 18 and 19, Paul gives us some characteristics of poor role models. Listen to what he says. He says, For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies to the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. Now take a good look at that. Look at what Paul is saying there. Here in this passage, Paul gives us five characteristics of negative role models. First, he tells us that negative role models are enemies of the cross. At the end of the day, a negative role model is an enemy of the cross. Family, they're enemies of the cross because they diminish 
what Christ did on the cross, and they will minimize His work, but they will also try to emphasize their own efforts. You ever know anybody like that? These are like the Judaizers that he talked about in chapter 3, verse 2, and also in Galatians chapter 5. Or also as Paul addresses the Romans in Romans chapter 6, you see, they use the cross. Paul was saying, you're using the cross as a license to sin. You say, hey, we're saved. We've got the green light to do whatever we want to. We've been washed in the blood of Christ. We can live however we wish. We can do what we want to because we're going to heaven anyway. Family, these are two mindsets that still exist in the world today. One mindset will urge us to earn a salvation that's already been accomplished, which exalts man's efforts and diminishes God's grace. The other mindset takes freedom in Christ to the extreme, taking advantage of His grace and ignoring the command for Christian living. Church, there will always, always be those who attempt to justify their sins. But the true believer understands the power of sin. The true believer understands the influence and the power and the, the, the magnetism of sin and values God's grace as an awesome gift that should be treasured and not assumed. Also, negative role models are ruled by their desires. Family, bad role models, values are determined by their desires rather than the other way around. And they justify it because it makes them happy. I'm going to do this because I want to do it. Yeah, I know what the Bible says, but this is what I want. In their case, the standard is not the absolute truth of Scripture, but the subjective truth of their feelings. You see, in their mind, God's will for their life is subject to their desires rather than the other way around. Third, Paul tells us that bad role models are proud of what they should be ashamed of. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, Paul writes this. He says, It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that does not occur even among the pagans. Let's take a time out right there for just a second. That is significant. He says, there's something going on in the church that isn't even happening in the pagan world. And then he says, a man has his father's wife and you're proud? Shouldn't you rather have been filled with grief and put out of your fellowship the man who did this? Take a good look at that. And what he says there, what he's addressing in that situation, Paul is beside himself. He is absolutely beside himself. This is a situation that should have grieved the church and driven it toward positive action. Instead, it appears that they're proud of their inaction. They're proud of their tolerance. They're proud of their open-mindedness. Does that sound familiar? Family, this is the world that we live in today. You know, they're probably really proud of the fact that it didn't pass judgment. They were proud when they should have been ashamed. But not Paul. Not Paul. He didn't ignore it. He didn't sweep it under the rug. Family, he didn't hope that it just, just went away. He addressed the situation for what it was at the time. And this is what a positive role model does. They take a stand for what is right, even and especially when it's not popular. Fourth, 
Paul tells us that negative role models are focused on earthly things. They're all about the here and the now. Negative role models are looking to the wrong means. And the reason why is because they're more interested in how they can get ahead than they are about how they can get to heaven. For them, earthly praise is, is far, far more desirable than heavenly assurance. And present satisfaction is way more attractive than heavenly joy. For them, the number one goal is to succeed in this life. And then once they've succeeded in this life, then to preserve this life for as long as humanly possible to the compromise or even to the denial of faith if necessary. Family, their focus is on earthly things rather than heavenly. Ultimately, Paul tells us that negative role models are headed for destruction. All of these things add up, accumulate to one end. One end only. They're headed for destruction. And Jesus sums up this fact very clearly in Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Listen to what he says. He says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but still loses his soul? You know, most negative role models haven't thought that far ahead. Because the focus of their life is on the here and the now. They have what I call a Scarlet O'Hara approach to heaven. Remember what Scarlet always used to say? I'll worry about that tomorrow. But here's the thing, family, and here's the thing, dads. Sometimes tomorrow never comes. I'll spend more time with my wife tomorrow. I'll spend more time with my family and have that quality time next week. I'll circle that on my calendar. You know what? Your family isn't so much interested, dads, in quantity of time than they are of quality of time. You can make any moment a quality moment with your children and with your spouse. Even if it means just getting in the car and driving down to ham orchards and having a peach and strawberry swirl ice cream. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to be genuine. Family, our role models do make a difference. And the life that, that we live, that you and I live, is an example that we set for others. Whether we want to or not, whether we even intend to or not, that's just the way that it is. And if you wear the name of Christ to the point that people know that you're a Christian, guess what? All eyes are going to be on you. They're going to watch you. They're going to listen to you. They're going to see how you react to the challenges of life. And let me tell you something, folks. We're living in some challenging times. They're watching you in what you say. They're watching us in what we do. They are watching us in what we post on social media. Verses 15 to 17, Paul highlights the benefits of a positive role model. So we're shifting gears now. He says, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern that we gave you. What he says there is profound. Let's take a look at what he says. First, we see that positive role models hunger to know Jesus better. If you're a Christian, you can't know Jesus well enough. If you're a believer, you can't know him well enough. 
We want to know him better. We hunger for that. The first thing that Paul says is that positive role models have the same attitude that he has. Now, from the outside looking in, somebody might say, well, man, that's kind of arrogant, isn't it? Follow my example as I follow Christ. You've got to understand where Paul's coming from. This may come across as arrogant, but think about what Paul is telling us. He recognized that he was in the process of growth. He knows, hey man, I'm not there yet. I'm just on the, ro- I'm on the road moving in the right direction. Come join me on the road. He was constantly in search of that which was going to make a more complete and vital relationship with Christ possible. His focus was on God's grace, not on His goodness. Family, a positive role model needs a relationship with Christ. We need it. I need a positive, growing, vibrant, meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ or I cannot be the man that God has called me to be, the husband, the father, the minister. I can't be, and you can't be, what God has called you to be and what Jesus died on the cross for you and I to be without that relationship with Jesus. Because they're not satisfied. We need not be satisfied knowing more about Jesus, family. We must want to know Jesus more. Paul also tells us that positive role models have a teachable spirit. Paul tells the Philippians that if they don't agree with him, and you know what, we don't always agree with one another. I don't know if that's a newsflash for y'all or not. But Paul says, hey, if you you don't agree with me, the Lord will make it plain to you. In other words, if we don't see it the same way, God's going to fill that gap. God's going to help you to see it the way that He wants you to see it. Paul understands that we grow at different rates. And he realizes that some will need more time to see what he has come to understand. And he is confident, he is confident that God will make that clear. You know, we need to follow that advice. If we don't see things the same way, instead of beating somebody into submission, let's pray that God will make it clear to them. Family, the greatest obstacle, and don't miss this, the greatest obstacle for discovering God's will for our life is our enthusiasm for learning God's will for our life. Hopefully that's up on the screen. And if it is, take a good look at that. Because that's important for us to understand. It's important for us as individual Christians to understand. Fathers, it's important for us as dads to understand. Because you know what? Many of us who struggle with what God wants us to do are really struggling with how to get God to approve what we want. You know, a coach or a teacher will usually be the first to tell you that desire and being teachable are two totally different things. We have all kinds of talent. I mean, all kinds of talent. But if we're not teachable, if we're not coachable, then we are severely limited in what we can do. And don't miss this, what I'm about to say. The most successful people in this world all have one thing in common. Every last one of them have this one thing in common. They are eager to learn anything that will help them improve. They ask questions. They listen. They are receptive. They are those who give and accept constructive criticism, and feedback. In other words, they're teachable. They're teachable. From a Christian perspective, they're willing for the Lord to do as Paul says in verse 15. They're willing for the Lord to make it clear to them. They don't get frustrated. They don't quit. 
They don't shift blame to somebody else. They're willing to make it clear through the Lord's guidance. Paul also tells his family that positive role models live what they believe. Let me tell you something. There's nothing worse than a hypocrite. There's nothing worse than a hypocrite, especially when they wear the name of Jesus. Oh, the damage that Christian hypocrites have done. But you know what? Positive role models live what they believe. And sometimes that means literally putting ourselves in the crosshairs. During the Nazi occupation of his country during World War II, King Christian X of Denmark noticed that there was a Nazi flag flying over one of the Danish public buildings. And so he called the commandant to come into his presence and he asked the commandant to take that flag down. And the commandant said, that flag ain't coming down. The king says, well, then a soldier will go and take it down. And the Nazi commandant said, that soldier will be shot. And King Christian X of Denmark said, I will be that soldier. And that flag came down. Paul writes in verse 16, only let us live up to what we have already attained. I mean, look at that. What a great idea. What a novel idea. Take a good look at that. Rather than wasting our time arguing over our differences and debating about what we don't understand, how much better would it be if we acted on what we do understand? Because let me tell you something. Whether you realize it or not, pick whatever your political issue is. There are people who claim to be Christians on either side of it. There are. And if Christians across the spectrum, regardless of what the issue is, will simply live up to what we have already attained as Christians, don't tell me we can't work things out. Don't tell me that we can't bring peace through Christ. It's because people have forgotten Jesus and elevated their issue above the cross. Only live up to what we have already attained. Church, people are watching us. Fathers, our families are watching us. Your spouse, your children, your grandchildren. Everybody's always watching dad. Think about it. When you were a kid, do you remember the things that your dad would do? I was driving down the road the other day with one of my sons. And I was coming up behind somebody on the highway, and I had my hand on the wheel like this, and I lifted up my wrist to see how fast I was going. It's just a little, little flick of the wrist. My dad did that. I grew up with that. I can remember standing in the front seat of our 1967 Chevy station wagon and coming up to a stoplight. The arm always came up. Think about your dad this morning. Think about all the little things that he did. You're always watching him. People are watching us. Fathers, our families, our children are watching us. The world is looking for good, positive role models. The world thirsts. The world hungers for good, positive role models. Role models who seek to align their lives with the Scriptures rather than the other way around. Family, there are people all around us that are looking for those positive role models. The positive role models that you and I have been called to be and family that we can be. Doesn't mean you've got to be perfect. There's nothing in this passage that says you have to be perfect. But we have to make the effort. 
And believe it or not, the best place, the absolute best place to find a role model in this life, a good role model should be in a Christian home, in the life of a Christian father, in the life of a good Christian father. Fathers, as a spiritual role model, you make a difference. You can make a positive difference, or trust me, you can make a negative difference. But God has created you and created me and placed us in this role in our life with our wonderful wives and our beautiful children to be a positive role model in their life. This is what we have been called to, brothers. We've been called to make a positive difference in our family. So why is that so important? The world will ask that question. Why is that so important? Let me share something with you. Statistically, between 66% and 75% of children who grow up in a home where their father was involved in the church, those children are also involved in the church. That's huge. Dad, you think that your presence here and involved in the church doesn't make a difference? Let me tell you, statistics don't lie. And Dad, if you're here today because it's Father's Day, man, that's great. It's wonderful. It's good to have you with us today. But what difference is that going to make in the life of your child? You want to know what's going to make the difference in the life of your child? It's where you choose to be next Sunday. And the Sunday after that, and the Sunday after that. Family, our role models do make a difference. And the perfect role model is Jesus. And our first step toward becoming like Him is by dying to ourselves. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, the one who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Fathers, there is no better example that you can set for your children than to confess Jesus as Lord and die to yourself in baptism. You think that's not a powerful example to your children? Ooh, there's nothing more powerful. And when your child comes to that conclusion and they confess Him as Lord and they choose to die to themselves in baptism, let me tell you something. There is no better experience as a father than to step into that baptistry with your son or your daughter. When they go down into that water and those sins are washed away and you bring them back up and now they're your brother or your sister in Christ. That's the joy of being a Christian dad. And don't miss it. Dads, we love you. We're glad that you're here. We love you. But Jesus and the Spirit and God the Father calls you to be the best role model that you can be. And the best role model that we can be is to follow Jesus more closely. If you have a need this morning, let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. If you're joining us online, if you share that in the comment section, I promise you somebody will respond and they'll pray for you on the spot. If you need to confess Jesus as Lord and put Him on in baptism, everything's ready, are you? If you're visiting with us today and you're looking for a church home, man, I hope you found it because we want you here with us. Whatever your need, don't leave this place and this time together in need. Bring your needs to Jesus while we stand and sing.